Remember, it was a joint operation between the Clinton uh, campaign, the DNC, their vendors, and the FBI and the Justice Department to spy on and try to destroy President Trump. Top leadership were involved in that. Now, the problem they had was that Hillary Clinton had evidently committed crimes. So they needed to work to cover that up. And, uh, and they knew she had committed a lot of crimes. And there's almost a comical piece of information that Judicial Watch has uncovered. We uncovered last week, and I described to you documents that we uncovered in a lawsuit uh, uh, for documents between P Lisa Page and Peter Strzok, the fired and retired FBI officials who were having an affair. They were running both the Clinton and Russia investigations. Peter Strzok uh, talked about having insurance policies against Trump's real election, uh, how they favored Trump over Clinton, denigrating Trump supporters, all sorts of partisan bias evident in their text messages. So we sued for all communications between Page and Strzok, and we've hit, we've struck gold in terms of getting documents that, again, Congress hasn't gotten, the media isn't interested in, and that the Justice Department has tried to withhold. And last week we got documents showing, uh, confirming that the FBI, uh, uh, the State Department tried to bribe the FBI with special positions for FBI officials abroad. If the FBI underclassified material from Clinton's email server. We also found that Hillary Clinton's lawyer uh, called up and yelled at the uh, FBI general counsel about Comey's letter to Congress about the Wiener laptop and that the FBI dropped everything to try to respond. Hillary Clinton was effectively running the FBI and DOJ at the time. It's pretty clear. They thought she was coming in as president. So this same lawsuit found some new documents. And this does show, as I said, this almost comical and keystone cop cover-up to protect Hillary Clinton. So you remember James Comey has this outrageous press conference in July of 2016 uh, saying that Hillary Clinton shouldn't be prosecuted, uh, mangling the rule of law, uh, just violating everyone's rights, including Hillary's, believe it or not and attacking her while trying to let her off the hook. It was just a really terrible, terrible performance by the FBI director, but it had the effect of protecting the, what was perceived to be the incoming president of the United States. And they all hated Trump, as I say. So a few days after that, there's an email. And, uh, and the chain involves Peter Strzok, that, the corrupt FBI official I talked to you about. So someone writes, That, uh, another F that an FBI official in the National Security Branch uh, was writing, uh, producing a chart of the statutory violations considered during the investigation of Clinton's server and the reasons for the recommendations not to prosecute. So this chart was being worked on after Comey had let her off the hook improperly. Someone replies, I'm still working on an additional page for these TPs, talking points that consist of the chart of the statutory violations considered during the investigation and the reasons for the recommendations not to prosecute, hopefully in non-lawyer friendly terms. So this is like a PR document. And Strzok forwards this to Page, uh, another FBI official, and, and says, I have refined, uh, broadly, uh, I have some concerns about asking some of our senior field folks to get into the business of briefing this case specifically when we have the director's statement as a kind of standalone document. And in my opinion, there's too much nuance, detail, and potential for missteps, but I get they may likely be asked for comments, so they were still working on it. But then someone writes to Strzok, the, uh, the deputy director, Andrew McCabe, will need to approve these before they are pushed out to anyone. At the end of last week, he wasn't inclined to send them to anyone, but it's great to have them on the shelf in case they're needed. And then and this is the kicker, the same official, I think, because the names are being redacted improperly, but we, we can't fight about that now. He writes to Strzok and Page, I'm not really sure why they continue working on these talking points. It's days after Comey had said that Hillary isn't going to be prosecuted, or should it be prosecuted. And Loretta Lynch, of, uh, who after her meeting with Bill Clinton at the tarmac, you know, we all knew how she was going to rule. 
Well, we all knew how she was going to rule before that, evidently, according to Comey. I'm not really sure why they continue working on these talking points. In the morning, I'll make sure Andy, Andy McCabe, the corrupt number two, tells Mike to keep these in his pocket. So this chart of potential crimes Hillary Clinton committed and the alleged reasons to not prosecute her are, quote, in the pocket of the FBI and have yet to be released. So we've caught the FBI in another cover-up of embarrassing information about Hillary Clinton. We also caught the FBI uh, really kind of manipulating the process in an after-the-fact way because uh, Comey asked for... Uh, a list of all cases charged in the last 20 years where the gravamen of the charge was mishandling classified information. It should be in a chart form. Again, another chart. The FBI likes its charts. With case name, a short summary for content, charges brought, and charges of conviction, and the charge of conviction. Now, this was written in May, but we already, we already know that Comey had decided not to prosecute Hillary long before that. So this is after the fact kind of rationalization to protect Hillary Clinton. It's just fascinating material. So we've got 186 pages of emails. I encourage you to read them all. And again, it's Judicial Watch that's finding this material. There's another great email here. Before I, I forgot about this one. It's not really scandalous, but it kind of tells you what Comey's attitude is. Um, oh, maybe it was in the other one, but I'll go over it again. So, uh, oh, never mind. I'm going to move on. So, a lot of emails in here. Uh, keep, go to our full press release for f further details. But just the headline is, there's a chart of potential Hillary Clinton crimes that the FBI is withholding from you, the American people. And they were trying to protect her uh, from having that come out uh, with the help of Andrew McCabe. So uh, we're expecting more information from this lawsuit. Now, with respect to Peter, uh, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, Andrew McCabe, people like that at the FBI, you should know the FBI is taking the position we can't get their text messages, or at least all of them. They have, a no op they have no obligation to protect, cure, and search and produce text messages under FOIA. Only if the agent decides to put the text message into the system will they look at it. So as best I can tell, text messages from Andrew McCabe, Comey, Page, and Strzok could be missing by the thousands under this theory of law that the FBI is still arguing and supporting in court. So the cover-up continues. And Congress is AWOL. Justice Department and the FBI are on the side of stonewalling and cover-up. And it's Judicial Watch that's battling for the truth and accountability in federal court. We should be concerned that these uh, aliens are voting in large numbers in a way and engaging in voter fraud. Or, or, or if they're not knowingly engaging in it, it's resulting in voter fraud and resulting in stalling votes for American citizens. There were two big events in the last few weeks. Out of Texas, the Texas government announced uh, they had reason to believe there were upwards of 100,000 aliens on the voting rolls who weren't supposed to be there, and upwards of nearly 60,000 of them have been voting in elections over the years. In Pennsylvania, there was a number that was generated um, grudgingly by the Pennsylvania bureaucrats who had been trying to cover it up, that 11,000 aliens were on the voting rolls. Not clear about the voting activities of those individuals. But it certainly is confirming of the concern that 
aliens are voting in large numbers in a way, or large enough numbers in a way, to impact elections. Now, what is the left's response to those astonishing Texas numbers that show about, uh, that detail the alien voting fraud crisis? Oh, the numbers may not be as high as first estimated because some of those individuals may have later become citizens and they may show up on the database showing them to be non-citizens, uh, but they've perfected their status and they're now citizens and they're eligible to vote. Hey, that may well be the case. Or Texas could have uh, underestimated and not picked up enough of the names. We don't know one way or another. But let's say the left is right. Let's say it's not 60,000 aliens illegally voting. It's 30,000 aliens illegally voting. Is that too many? What about 10,000 aliens illegally voting? Is that too many? What about 1,000 aliens illegally voting? What about 100 aliens illegally voting? I tell you what, what about one alien illegally voting?